Hello everyone. Welcome to Friday's edition of Take 5, where actually today we are concluding the last line or lines of the Sermon on the Mount's Lord's Prayer. If you've been praying it all week, it's a beautiful prayer to pray literally, but also to use as a model. And so now we're concluding the model with the prayer for, for God's care for us or for his protection. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Here's what we're covering today. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's what we'll cover today. Now, in some of your Bibles, especially in the older King James Bibles, many of us memorize then a final phrase that says, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And it was right there in our Bibles. Uh, let me just say a word about that. It's, that phrase is not in the best and oldest uh, manuscripts. Uh, it was probably written in later by a scribe. And so it did show up in the King James Bible and a few others, but it, it does not seem to have been there in the original Gospel of Matthew or in probably in what Jesus uttered on the Sermon on the Mount. Now, for thine is the kingdom, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. You can't say it's unbiblical. Whatever scribe wrote that in probably had uh, 1 Chronicles 29, 11 in mind in a prayer of David's. Uh, he pretty much says the same thing. Now, why someone would want to add that at the bottom of this prayer, I'm not sure. But so that's where it came from. Not part of the original Lord's Prayer, but still a beautiful part of Scripture. So what we want to cover today is that last section. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It really is, as we pray, it's a prayer of protection. Even though we're wanting God's kingdom to come and his will to be done, literally, but also in our lives, we realize that in the meantime, we're living in this mean world with hard streets. And so when we are done praying, you know, you almost visualize yourself getting out of the prayer uh, kneeling and into the world and into the world that we go into having just prayed. It's a mean place. And so the prayer concludes with a prayer of protection. As I go out there, Lord, please. And then he says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Some have tripped up on why would God ever lead us into temptation. A couple of things on that. Jesus may have had in mind his own um, walk into the wilderness. Remember when he started his ministry, the devil led, um, the spirit led Jesus into the wilderness where he met the enemy and the enemy tempted him in severe ways. And so in some ways it might be Jesus saying, pray that you don't have to go through the same sort of temptation and testing that I did, that the spirit led him into the wilderness and face to face he, um, he had the diabolical temptations. So pray that you don't go into that. So that's, that could be part of the meaning. But part of the meaning, I think, as well, is it's a Hebraic idea of do not allow us to be led um, into temptation. As you, as you lead us into our lives, as you lead us into our world and into the, the events of the city, um, please protect us. Protect us from the things that would bring temptation. Deliver us from the evil that would come into our lives. Um, I think that's a very legitimate prayer. And it's a really good prayer in some ways coupled with some self-discipline. Know yourself. Know which avenues out there that are more tempting for you. Um, and allow the Spirit of God to not only keep you from those avenues, but to convict you when you get near them. Don't go down those roads. So as, you, as we walk into the world, um, it's really a prayer. Lord, um, protect me from temptation. Deliver me from evil. Empower me to walk in the ways that are ways of righteousness and not down paths that are dangerous. Give me the wisdom to make choices um, that do not lead to sin and to temptation. It's a beautiful way to end the prayer. We begin with the worship of the God in heaven, our Father who art in heaven, and it ends with, and I live down here. And as I'm living down here, I'm often tempted. Lord, please protect me from the temptations that are so rampant in my life in these streets. 
Beautiful way to end the prayer. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Have a great weekend. Keep praying that prayer every day or make it the model for your own words. And then on Monday, we'll continue in the Sermon on the Mount. Have a great weekend. We'll see you.